Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday afternoon out here on on the deck here at my house. Uh, this is Lewis with Cross Your Heart Ministries, and and uh, I posted a video last night, a short video last night about uh, that I would be doing this video, announcing this one that I would be doing in the near future, and uh, I thought I'd try to do it today for you. Uh, it's concerning the rapture. There's uh, a teaching about rapture out there that most of the churches are teaching and the people are looking forward to that and uh, the way the world's looking that the, according to their teachings it could it could happen any moment so I wanted to talk about it and I wanted to clear some things up and and let you think about this here uh, I want everybody to clear their minds about anything they've been taught anything that they've heard but I want them to instead I want them to Get themselves totally right with God. That's first of all. We have to be right with God. And then go into his word and and uh, ask his wisdom on this and his truth. We need the truth from God, not from man. You don't need it from me. You need it from God. So I'm not saying that, that I'm correct on anything that I'm telling you. I'm saying that this is what God has revealed to me. And that that's what his Bible his truth that's his the bible is his truth it's his letter to us telling us and people say well we don't know what the end holds we don't know what to expect in the end times yes we do jesus said through paul that i have foretold you all things i have foretold you all things you know what to look for if you know the signs you will know when he's coming you won't know the hour it says that you won't know the hour, but you will know by the signs that the end is near. And you'll know to be ready and what to expect and what to look for. So with that being said, I'm going to ask a, the God for God to uh, give us wisdom and to show us things that we didn't know. He usually shows me things when I go through this because I ask for wisdom all the time from Him. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you at this time, I thank you, Lord, for letting us have a beautiful beautiful day today it's a beautiful autumn afternoon with the leaves falling and and the temperatures are just right for sitting out here and praising with you and worshiping you father i pray lord that you will fill us with your knowledge and your blessings lord that we will feel your presence lord and that we will let you guide us through this and that all minds will be open and all ears open and all eyes open to see, that the eyes see that can see, and those that can hear, hear what you say unto us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so I want to go directly into the book and the passage where they teach rapture from. And that is in the first book of Thessalonians, Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4. And what this chapter chapter is actually talking about is where the dead are. Now, these people, they were confused and they were upset uh, and sorrowful because the ones that had already passed on, the ones that had already died, they thought that was it for them, that they had died and that they wouldn't see the coming of the Lord. And they were concerned about that. So Paul wanted to clear this up for them. And that's what this is about is where the dead are. So we'll pick it up. Uh, we'll start with verse 13 and it says but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that's talking about the ones that have died that you sorrow not don't sorrow because that's not the end even as others do which have no hope the ones who don't believe in the resurrection don't have any hope for those that's already died. They think that's it. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep or that are dead, through Jesus or in Jesus, God will bring them with him. Okay, it says that he will bring them with him. So where are they at? Are they in a hole in the ground out there waiting are they out there waiting? No. He said he's going to bring them with him. He didn't say he was coming back here and bring them out. He said he would bring them with him. 
For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And it comes from Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Is where the, it was speaking by the word of the Lord. Is that to when we die, the spirit goes back to the Father who gave it. And this body goes back to the dust where it came from. We're done with it. When you die. You rise. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not proceed, or it says prevent, but it means proceed, proceed them which are asleep. We cannot go before them. The reason we can't go before them, in other words, if he returns, we're not going, and then he'll get them later. We cannot go before they have. Why? Because they are already there. When you die, your spirit rises instantly back to the Father who gave it. That's from Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Or chapter 12, verse 7, I'm sorry. Chapter 12, verse 7. That ere the silver cord part, in other words, when your life ends, the Spirit ascends back to the Father who gave it to you in the breath of life. Remember that breath of life. Remember that. The Spirit into you is the breath of life. He breathed it into Adam in the garden and brought him to life. That was the Spirit entering into him. All right. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Now, some will tell you that's three separate events, but it's not. It's one and the same. He will descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. The archangel will shout, announcing his coming. And with the trump of God. Now this trump, you have to know which trump this is to understand. There are seven trumpets. There are seven trumpets in the book of Revelations that sound. There's no in between there. There's no four and a half, five and a half, or anything like that. It's seven trumpets. Remember that. This trumpet right here, when it sounds, and the trumpets are the voices of the angels announcing something. Every time they're announcing something, it's the voice of the angels. In Revelation, John was talking, said, I heard a voice behind me as of a trumpet. And he turned and there was an angel talking to him. So these trumpets are the voices of the angels and that making announcements to us. There will be seven. All right. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Why will they rise first? Because they already have. They're already there. And he's bringing them with him. It just told you that. He's bringing them with him. So, to, to prove that this is the seventh trump, I'm going to turn back over to 1 Corinthians. If you want to go there, I'll kind of take the time and get over there to it so you can get to it too. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Are you there yet? I'll wait just a little bit and let you get there if you want to go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it's talking about our, our corrupt, corruptible bodies and our mortal souls. That's what it's talking about here. And he says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Neither doeth corruption inherit incorruption. So, now, it said in First Thessalonians over there that the trumpet would sound and he would be coming. That trumpet is announcing his kingdom has come. That's what it's announcing, that Christ is coming. All right. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We won't all die. But we shall all be changed. All will be changed. Sinner and Christian alike will be changed when he returns. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, I pay attention right here, at the last trump. Now, there are seven trumps. So the one when Christ returns is the last one, the furthest one out. That is number seven. Christ's number is seven. Seven, seven, seven is, means spiritual completeness, spiritual perfection. That is his number. It represents him. The devil's number is six. In Revelation, when the sixth trumpet sounds, when the sixth angel shouts the announcement, 
the Antichrist comes into power upon this earth. Now, six comes before seven. Keep that in mind. So that means what? That means that the Antichrist is coming before Christ. Now, what are the churches teaching you? These churches are teaching you that, that this trumpet that sounds in 1 Thessalonians is Christ coming back and taking the church away. And then the Antichrist is coming into power. What trumpet are, are they talking about? Because there's only seven. The fifth trump is not announcing Christ. The fifth trumpet does not announce Christ. The seventh one is his number. The seventh trumpet is the one who announces Christ's coming. The Antichrist has already been announced at sixth one. He's already here. He's already here. So, it comes at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, not maybe, not might, it will sound. And the dead be raised incorruptible. Why? Because they're already there. This, this is the same thing he's saying in 1 Thessalonians. He's saying it here a little bit plainer for you. So you can understand, because see, they got confused about what he told him there, and he writes another letter to them, telling them, don't be confused, confused by that first letter, but I'm going to explain more to you. But we should, the dead shall be, the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And this is also talking to, you know, every, the, the, remember I said that the sinners will be in spiritual bodies too. And we shall be changed. We will be changed into the incorruptible flesh body. For this corruptible, perishable body that can perish, this flesh, must put on incorruption. Why? Because up here in verse 50, he said that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The flesh has to go. So it has to put on incorruption. That's a spiritual body. And this mortal, and mortal always pertains or refers to the soul. And the word mortal means liable to die. Liable to die. So the sinners have put on the incorruptible body too. They're in their spiritual bodies also, the same as we are. But we have the mortal soul must put on immortality. Theirs does not. Theirs does not put on immortality because they have to face the second death coming. The ones that are serving him when he returns, they are finished. They are there. They have done their job. They have followed him and they have been loyal and they will put on an immortal soul. So when this corruptible have put on incorruption and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? In other words, we will have eternal life. If you're following him, you'll have eternal life. Now, when he returns, what's he doing? It's the Lord's day. And the Lord's day is the millennial reign. And that millennial reign will be set up. It's a thousand year period. That's what millennial means. Now, that could be, boy, however you want to look at it, it could be a thousand years, literally. Or it could be one day, because one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. That's Bible too. So either way, it's a time of teaching. The, the devil and his angels and his little evil demon spirits that are out here right now influencing people to do wrong, they will all be cast into the bottomless pit and locked away for a thousand years or for that day. They will be locked away. There is no evil influence in anybody's life. And it's a time for teaching God's elect, his chosen ones, the ones that have overcome, they will be teaching during that time. Because why? Because some of these people out here, they don't know what to believe. They're God's creation. They're God's children. And he loves his children. And he don't want any to perish. It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that all should have everlasting life. That is his desire for us. Now, the ones that just plain wouldn't choose him and refused and hated him, they don't get this chance. And this is not a second chance. This is a chance for those who really wanted to serve God and they really wanted too bad and they were listening to these false apostles thinking they were hearing the truth and they were deceived. These people are the ones that will have that chance to hear the truth without any interruption. 
then after that thousand years, the devil will be loosed for a little season. Why will he be loosed for a little season? Because God don't want unfair justice, I guess you could say. He don't, everyone has to have that chance to be tempted to make their choice. That's why we're in this, this world age, is to make our choice on who we will actually love and serve, God or the devil. And if they didn't have that choice during the millennial reign, they didn't have the devil to choose from because he's not there. So he has to let him influence them. And it said thousands upon thousands would still turn away from God, even after they've known the truth. It's hard to believe, but he said it would happen. And then the second death comes. That's when the, the, the battle of Armageddon comes. And he will take the devil and the false prophet, the Antichrist who is the devil, to take the Antichrist and the false prophet and all of those who took the mark of the beast willingly and those who, who served him and would not serve God, those will be cast into the lake of fire that burneth forever and ever and ever and ever. And then the eternity is here. And we are going through the eternity with Christ if you have overcome. If you're not walking with him when he, when he does come back and when the end, very end comes, you're in a world of hurt. We have to be serving him. So let's go back over here to 1 Thessalonians and finish reading here what I was reading. It says, We which are alive and remain... That's the ones I just told you there at the last trump. After the Antichrist is in power, they're telling you it's before that. That's what the churches tell you, that the Antichrist comes after this. Here it does. Well, he don't. Actually, here's where he's being taken away. But anyway, we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Okay, here we go, flying up in the sky. Right. That's what to tell you. I was, uh, had a, uh, friend, family member that sent me a video yesterday of a well-known preacher and I will not mention his name because I don't do that. I don't diss anybody. But he's preaching. He is a big-time rapture preacher. Probably one of the biggest ones out there right now. He's really, He really believes he's telling you the truth. But the thing is, he on his video, I listened to some of it, and he said... It says we will be called up together with them in the clouds of heaven. It don't say that. You see, the devil has ministers too. And most of them don't know they're ministers of the devil. They don't realize it. But the devil, when he tempted Christ, he used scripture to tempt him, but he didn't quote it exactly right. He would twist it or change it just a little bit, just trying to fool Christ, which he couldn't because it's Christ's words. He is the word, the living word. But he couldn't fool him. But they can fool people. And by saying that right there, that we will be caught up together with them in the clouds of heaven, he's telling them they're going to fly away up in the sky and meet Christ. That's not what it says. That's not what it means. Paul was Hebrew, and he spoke what you call colloquial Greek. In other words, he had Greek slang. He wasn't fluent in the Greek language, but he used symbolism and signs or words that would describe things like, you can go over to Hebrews chapter 12 and he said we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses and we're about to run this foot race he was in Athens at the time and that's where the, the Olympics started from and he was there and he used that race as an analogy to get across his point that we're running a race and we're trying to reach the finish line which is the high calling of Christ eternal life but he said we were surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses. Did he mean there that we were that they were surrounded by heavenly clouds? That they were up in the sky running a race? No. He was talking about groups. We are surrounded by such a group of witnesses, and we're about to run this race. All right, so we are in. Right here it says we will be caught up together with them in the clouds. It's talking about groups of people, groups of peoples uh in revelation he says that the angels you know you can hear that four, four wheeler in the background somebody out here a neighbor out here in the woods but anyway uh he said that the angels would go to the four corners of heaven and draw all the people together and, and bring them 
In other words, that's when he's bringing them with him, those that have already risen. They go out and gather them together in groups. These group from over here on this side of heaven, this group from this side, this group from the other side, and this one from here and there. And they bring them all together with Christ, and they all come here. Then we're gathered together in groups. The people in America that are saved will be brought together. The people that are in Africa that are saved will be brought together. Those that are alive and remain will all be brought together in different groups, brought together as one group. And then it says, to meet the Lord, we will be gathered together in the clouds or in the groups to meet the Lord in the air. Now this word air, they say that means we're going up in the sky and meet him. Christ is coming here and going to set his foot on the Mount of Olives. That's biblical. That's what he's going to do. And, and when he gets here, he's going to do that. He's going to set up here. So why would we go in the sky if he's coming down here? We're going to be with him. And it says to meet him in the air. Now, this Bible was translated from Greek. And Greek is a specific language. Each word means a certain thing. You have a word for sky, you have a word for air that you breathe, you have, you know, you have different words for different things. This word here used in the Greek, from the Greek, if you go back to the Greek, it says to breathe unconsciously in and out, to respire. The breath, remember a while ago, if you remember, if you were paying attention, in the beginning, God, he created Adam and he breathed into him the breath of life the Spirit into him. In 1 Corinthians, Paul said that we would be changed instantly in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, be changed into an incorruptible spiritual body. Spiritual air. That's what he's saying here. It's the same thing. We will be changed into a spiritual body, and we so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're not flying up in the sky to meet him. People just took this the wrong way completely. And what they're saying is, I mean, actually the teaching that they have got now, that is the deception of the end times. And I need now, I guess, to go over to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where Paul is telling them, I don't want you to be confused by that first letter that I wrote you. I don't want you to think that the kingdom of God is right now. I don't want you to think that it's right now. I want you to pay attention and see what's going to happen before it happens. He's going to give you the signs to watch for and know what not to fall for. In other words, he's going to tell you about this rapture teaching. Now he says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, when we're gathered together with him, that you be not soon shaken or unsettled in mind or be troubled. Don't be worried about it. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us. Don't get confused by that first letter that we wrote to you. As that day of Christ is at hand. Don't think that it's at hand right now. Let no man, let no man, no preacher, no anything, no false prophets or false apostles, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. That day is the day of the Lord. That day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Falling away of who? Who can fall away from God? Think about that for a second. Who can fall away from God? The church. The people that are serving Him. The sinners can't fall away from God because they're not with God anyway. But those that are serving Him, there will come a falling away. What is the falling away? They're falling away from the truth. They're falling away from the true teaching of Christ, the true gospel of Christ, and they're falling to the false rapture teaching. They're falling to it. They're falling right now. So it's happening. It's happening now. So the day of the Lord is pretty close. But you got to watch for these signs. This right here is a sign that the church would be fooled and they would fall away. 
and the man of sin be revealed. What man of sin? The son of perdition. Who is the only one who's been sentenced to perish already? His sentence has not been carried out yet. He hadn't been cast into the lake of fire yet, but he's already been judged, and that is the devil himself. And that's who the Antichrist is. I mean, people think the Antichrist is going to be born as a man and 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 rise up into power, political power, and, and all this stuff. The book of Revelation tells us that when there will be a war, that the devil is locked up right now, or, or he's, he's in heaven right now. I guess that kind of brought, caught you off guard too. But Jesus told him, get behind me. Where's Jesus at? He's in heaven. So the devil is locked up. His evil spirits, for every negative there's, or every positive, there's a negative. The Holy Spirit is the positive. There's also the evil spirit of the devil and his, his little demon creatures are there out here tempting the world and causing this, you know, causing people to fall to wrong teachings, fall to sin. That's the devil's influence. It's not him. He's, he was here physically and tempted Christ and he was taken away. His demon spirits are here now. You can see them everywhere. Demonism in this world right now is greater than it's ever been. That's another sign. But anyway, he's been sentenced to perish, but he hadn't been he hadn't been destroyed yet. But anyway, the book of Revelation chapter 12 tells you that he will wage war. Him and his angels will wage war against Michael and his angels, and he will cast him out, cast him out into this earth. And he says, woe to the earth, because he's with you now. That is when he comes into power as the Antichrist. He will come, and it says in Revelation that he will come looking like a lamb, or like the lamb. He will come looking like Christ. He's always wanted to be Christ. He wanted Christ's mercy seat from the very beginning when he tried to overthrow the kingdom the first in the first earth age. He tried to overthrow it then. And that's why God destroyed it all and made us all flesh so we could choose who to serve. But he will be cast out in, into the earth and he will fall as a star from heaven onto this earth. And he's coming looking like the lamb. He's not coming here to destroy people. Well, he is, but they don't know it. I mean, they won't know he's doing it. He's coming here not to be hateful and evil, but he's coming looking like Christ. How do you think Christ is going to be when he comes? Is he going to be evil and hateful to people? No, he's going to be kind to those that are his. The devil's coming looking like Christ, wanting to be Christ. This next verse tells you what, who he is and what he does. He opposes all and exalteth himself above all that is called God. He thinks he's greater than God. Or that is worshipped. So that he, as God, and that's a little g, as a God, sitteth himself up in the temple of God, capital G, the God, sets himself up in God's temple, showing himself that he is God. Little g. He sets himself up in the temple, proclaiming that he's God. And what is the teaching the, the teaching is that Christ is coming first. They're watching for Christ to come. When the Antichrist comes down looking like Christ, who are they going to think it is? They're expecting Christ first before the Antichrist comes, and it's right the opposite. You're going to have to pay attention to what God said and not what my, man said. The devil will set himself up in the temple proclaiming that he is God, and Christ hadn't come yet. And he's going to come saying, I'm here to rapture you out. The Antichrist is coming. It's his teaching. He's put it in this world to fool everyone who will not search for the truth. And God will tell you what he's going to do to those who didn't find the truth or didn't try to find the truth. Who did or did find it and didn't believe it, didn't want to because they were afraid of the tribulation or whatever their reason. But he sets himself up in the temple proclaiming that he's God. And he's saying, I'm here to rapture you out. Worship me and I will take the church away. So they won't have to live through what's coming. You know, the mark of the beast is not a tattoo on your skin. It's not a microchip under the skin. Everybody's so scared of all this stuff. 
you know, if they tell you you need a chip so we can keep track of who's had the virus vaccination, all this stuff. I mean, at one time people thought the social security cards, social security number was the mark of the beast. <laughs> the mark of the beast is in your forehead. The thinking part of your brain is in your forehead. It's in your forehead. That's where memories and is stored. Knowledge is stored in your forehead. So if you get the teaching of the devil in your forehead, or on your forehead, as it says, you have got the teaching of this Antichrist, this rapture, in your mind. You're already starting to receive the mark of the beast, and you're accepting it. You're accepting it out of ignorance. Now, I'm not saying you're an ignorant person. I'm saying you're ignoring the facts, the truth. Don't ignore the truth. He said, I would not have you to be ignorant, but to study and learn and listen. When Paul was teaching, he was taught directly by Christ. So the mark of the beast is in your forehead. The right hand, it says, or in your hand. That's doing the work. That's doing the work, spreading the teaching. And teaching, they, they believe in it and teaching others so. You're doing the work of that devil and you don't even know it. Doing the work of the devil. The one that it says here, remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Paul's already told these people once. They didn't understand, so he's telling them again. And now you know what withholdeth that he might reveal in his time. What's holding the devil back right now? Like I told you, he's in heaven right now. The archangel Michael is over him. He wages war against the archangel, and he casts him down here in, in Revelations 12. For the mystery of iniquity, or lawlessness, that's the devil, doeth already work. His work is being done, preparing for his coming. He's getting... The, 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 the rapture teaching churches and ministers are preparing the way for the devil and they don't even know it some of them don't some of them may know it and don't care they may be working for him but some are innocent people that just haven't learned the truth only he who now letteth or holds back restrains that's the archangel michael will hold him back until he be taken out of the way so when he steps aside and they cast him down here then woe to us and then that wicked one will be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, with his word, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. When he comes, when he comes, he will take him and lock him away in that bottomless pit. And at the end, he will totally annihilate him and cast him into the lake of fire, along with those who took the mark of the beast. Are you taking the mark of the beast right now? Or are you going to follow Christ? Will you believe the true teachings and watch for the right bridegroom to come? There are two Jesus is coming. One is false and one is real. Don't fall to the wrong one because then you will be fornicating with the devil. God don't like that. He will not accept it. He is God and no one else. He is a jealous God. Be sure you know him when he comes. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. He's going to fool the world. It says that he, in one place it says he will be able to bring fire down from heaven to fool the people. In other words, he'll be sitting in power and he can snap his finger and make lightning strike. He's supernatural, same as, as God is supernatural or any angel is supernatural. He has powers. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, those that perish with him, because they received not the love of the truth. They didn't love God enough to find his truth. They didn't love the truth when they heard the truth. What many, when they hear this truth, when they hear this truth, will turn their nose up at it. And they will say, that's not true because Pastor so-and-so says it's not. What does God say? Don't worry about what I say. What does God say? Because I don't know anything without Christ. And I'm pretty sure most of you have never heard this teaching. It's because it's the truth, and there's very few that enter in. But they loved not 
They had not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. And this word delusion in the Greek, strong delusion in the Greek, this means he will send them an imposter. He will send them the spurious Messiah, the false Messiah he will send to them. Why? So they can, because they should believe a lie. They believe the rapture lie. They believe the lie they were being told, the devil's lies. They believed it. And because they didn't love, they had not the love of the truth. If they heard the truth, this is the ones he's talking about that heard the truth and didn't like it. Didn't like it. So they refused it. He will send them that dead posture, just like he said. And if they believe the lie then, if they believe that lie and they bow to the wrong Jesus, that they all might be damned, pretty strong, be damned, judged, who believed not the truth, would not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The devil is the, the epitome of unrighteousness, and they would rather enjoy him then enjoy the truth. They don't want to hear that they're going to be here through the tribulation and have to fight. There's a spiritual war that's going to happen. It's started already. It's going on now. But it's a spiritual war. It's not flesh. You have to get out of this flesh. You have to quit worrying about the flesh because if you're walking with Christ, you're walking after the things of the Spirit, not uh, the things of the flesh. We have to quit thinking like flesh bodies and think in the Spirit. Maybe you don't know how to do that. Well, call on God. Trust in Him and get in tune with His Spirit and your Spirit as one and He will un let you understand things that you need to know. Now, He did put the spirit of slumber upon some that won't understand it. They're protected by Him because He knew they couldn't understand it. I mean, that's, I mean I'm talking about people that's not, that are mentally, mentally challenged or children children you know, it's not of, of the age of accountability they are protected but if you know the truth you've heard the truth and you reject the truth because some false apostle tells you false teachings that, that, that you know tickle these little or mind big but these itching ears and let you hear well you're not going to have to be here and face the antichrist you're not going to have to be here and face the tribulation because you're going to be raptured out we are not cowards. We are in a battle. We are soldiers for the Lord. Why would we run when the battle begins? Why would he take his soldiers out and let the devil destroy everybody that's left here? He's not going to do that. He tells you exactly what's going to happen right here. And you can go to Matthew 24. You can go over to Matthew 24, and they'll tell you there. They'll try to say that that's, that that's uh, the rapture there. And Jesus tells you plainly, Matthew 24, over here. Let me go over here to it. Over here, Matthew 24. I stopped at Matthew 13 for a second because I'm going to have to refer back over there. But Matthew 24, the subject of this chapter is the end times, what will be happening in the end. And he tells you that the subject of this is that the Antichrist will be setting himself up in power. He will be setting himself up in power, proclaiming to be God. It's the same as over there. He says, For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. They're coming saying they are of Christ. They are teaching Christ. They are not saying they are the Christ. They're saying they're Christians, in other words, Christian ministers. He also tells you in the Bible there not to be amazed that, that there are ministers of the devil because the devil himself is transformed into a minister of light when he sets himself up in the temple. So it's no mystery. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars and, there, and, and be not troubled for these things must come to pass and, but the end is not yet. All these things will happen. The end will come when the Antichrist sets him up in the temple and brings world peace and prosperity to everyone. That's when the end's coming. Nation shall rise against nation. All this stuff's going to keep kingdom against kingdom. All this is going to be happening. But it's just the beginning of sorrows because when you think it's over, it really hits. It says, Then they shall deliver you up 
to be afflicted and shall kill you. And that's talking about spiritually kill you, not physically. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. When you stand up for Christ, they're going to hate you. You realize how many people are probably hating me right now. And with this one right here, there's going to be a lot probably hating me. So, so be it. I'm going to teach truth no matter who likes it. I'm teaching God's truth. Why? Because I trust him and I love him. And I don't want to be like the world. I want to be like Christ. That's our goal, to be like Christ. And many will be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. See? And they'll betray one another. Why? Because when the Antichrist is sitting in power, proclaiming to be Christ, it says that mother would, do, would that children would put their parents to death or that the, that the mother and father would bring their children to death. Death is a symbol of the Antichrist, or de the devil is death. That's one of his names, is death. And they will bring him, and you'll be like, well, please t take him, because he's, he won't believe us that you're Jesus. He won't believe that you're Jesus. He's telling us you're not, he, and you need to teach him. You need to take him. So they bring him to him, not knowing what they're doing. They bring him to death. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. There's many of them out there right now teaching this false teaching because iniquity shall abound. Sin will abound. Look around you people. Look around you at the sin in this world. This world is literally going to hell right now. And the love of many shall wax cold. People don't even care anymore. But he that endures and shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. If you want to be saved, people talk about, are you saved? The end is not here yet. If you want to be saved, you will endure until the end, and then you will be saved from the wrath of God that's coming. Right now, you've got to walk that narrow path and be saved from your sins, stay out of sin, and walk that road of salvation until the end to be saved literally saved from the wrath of God. If you're not walking with him when he returns, you're not going to be saved from it. Right now, you're on the path of salvation. You're growing in your salvation until the end, and when the end comes, you will be saved if you stay true to God. He that endures until the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of this kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. During the millennial reign, it will be taught to everyone. The gospel would be taught to everyone during the millennial reign. And they have the chance to, to accept it, like I said. And then the devil will be loose for a little season, and many will fall. And then the end will come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, that is the Antichrist. It was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. He shall stand in the holy place, in the temple. Whosoever readeth, let him understand this, that the devil setting himself up in the temple. This is the subject of this chapter. Remember that. And let them which be in Judea flee, flee to the mountains. Get out there and start preaching against it. Don't run and hide. It's not what it's saying. Let him that's on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. In the Bible, they would sit on top of their houses and pray. Paul was on that rooftop praying. Peter was on a rooftop praying. They prayed from the roof. If you're up there, keep praying. In other words, don't stop praying. You can come down off that roof, but don't stop praying and rejoicing and worshiping and testifying and spreading the word and fighting the spiritual battle against the Antichrist. Don't stop. All right? Neither let him that is in the field return back to take his clothes. The field. That's why I stopped at Matthew 13 for a second while ago when I was coming over here to Matthew 24. I stopped there because it says the field is the world. All right, so let him that is in the field that's out there in the world doing the work of God. Let him not return back home to take his clothes. Go on out in the field and keep doing the work. Don't rest. Keep fighting. All right? When woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. To be with child. It's nothing, if your woman is pregnant, there's nothing wrong with that. Why would that be a big worry? I thought of this when I was a little child. What would be so bad about a woman that's with child when Christ comes? Or when the Antichrist comes? Why would that be bad? It's not talking about physical pregnancy. 
Remember I said that, that the bridegroom is coming and he's jealous. He's a jealous God and he will not tolerate you fornicating with the devil. That's what it's talking about. Being with child means to be in your mind impregnated with the false teachings of the devil. Impregnated into your mind the mark of the beast. Woe to them that has the mark of the beast. And the mark of the beast in the hand is doing the work of Satan. And give suck. That means nursing along these teachings and spreading it and doing the work. It's all the same thing. It's, it, they, it just keeps repeating the same truth to you. Woe to them that are doing the devil's work and teaching his false teachings. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Pray that you're not resting, that you're fighting and doing the work. Pray that you're not in the, in the winter time, but in the time of harvest, harvesting souls for God. For then shall be a great tribulation. And see, he's telling you right here, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. You're still here. The Antichrist is in power. Remember, the abomination of desolation is there. He's still in power, and you're still here. And except the days be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. For the elect's sake, he has shortened the days from a seven-year tribulation. He's shortened it, and it tells you in Revelations how short that time is. And you can look that up for yourself. I think it's in Revelation chapter 9. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ. This is Jesus setting up, fixing to rapture us. Believe it not. Don't believe it. For there shall arise false Christ and false apostles teaching this thing. And they shall be great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they would fool the very elect. But anyway, he's, he's telling you that here. That just don't believe that that's Jesus sitting in the temple. And everybody's telling you in Matthew that he's talking about the rapture coming. No, he's not. He's telling you don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. He said it would be as it was in the days of Noah. That they would eat and drink and bury and, and marry up with Satan and, and do whatever they wanted to and not accept the truth until they were destroyed. And he says then, I'm, I'm skipping over some because I didn't want to do this whole chapter and because it's getting lengthy. But in, in verse 40, he says, There shall be two in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they'll say, well, there's the rapture right there. There's two of them out there in the field. One of them will just disappear. No, not disappearing. Where did the flesh go? The flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The body would still be laying there if he did get raptured out. What it's talking about here, there's two in the field. The field is the world, and they're doing the work in the field for the Lord. They're doing the Lord's work. One is taken. Where is he taken to? Well, let's just find out. Where is he taken to? The disciples asked Jesus that in Luke chapter 17. He said the same thing. There shall be there, Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? Where is he taken? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither the eagles will be gathered together. And these eagles should have been, or should have been translated as vultures. That's what it even says here in the King James in, when it's underlined and got the little words down at the bottom. It says, Wherever the body is, the dead body, who, who is death? The devil is another word for him. So where the dead rotting carcass is, the vultures will be gathered together to eat up his lies. That one that was taken was taken in by the devil. He swallowed the lies hook, line, and sinker, and he is doomed. That one was took. The other one, where was he at? He was in the field doing the work. Now let's see. Let's go back to Matthew 24. It says, who then, I'm going to verse 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom the Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Let's back up a little bit. Let's back up here. We did that about the two being in the field, two women grinding in the next verse 41. Two women grinding, one to be taken, one to be left. They're all doing the work. It symbolizes working for the Lord. All right. Watch the, therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord comes. You don't know when he's coming, so keep watching. Don't fall to the false teachings. Don't fall to the lies. And keep watching for the true Messiah to come. But know this, 
that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. He wouldn't have run off. He would have stayed there and done and watched for the true one to come. Watched for it. He says Jesus comes as a thief in the night. He's watching for it. Therefore, be you also ready for in such an hour you think not that the Son of Man cometh. He does. He does come when you think the least. So who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his house to give him meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. Stay in the field. Keep doing the work. Don't believe the lies. Don't believe the rapture because it is a lie. It is the end time deception. And people will... They're going to like, they're not going to like this message. But maybe they'll heed to it a few if one person hears it and one person waits on Christ and don't fall to the wrong one. If one hears it, it's worth it. I'm not out here to make friends and be something great. I'm out here to spread the word of the Lord and I'm out here to tell you the truth. I don't, it's nothing to me except for that I love you, that if you throw your life away. The only thing it is to me is that I love you and I will love God and I want to fill his kingdom up with trustworthy souls, those who will stand with him and be with him. That's what he wants. He don't want these wishy-washy people that go, come and go and come and go and come and go. He wants you on fire for him. Lukewarm, he will spew, out, spew you out of his mouth. That's in Revelation. There is no rapture of the church. You are here to do a battle for God. You are here to work for him until the very end. He that endures until the end, not until he flies away, the one who endures until the very end shall be saved. So with that being said, I hope that you will read the scriptures that I gave you and that you will get you a strong concordance and take these key words like the word air and and body and all those take those words back to the greek in the greek dictionary in the back of a strong's concordance it will open up new things to you study to see to to approve your ministry i've done that i do that i will not get on here and teach something that i'm not absolutely certain of and if for some reason i find out that i was mistaken i will tell you so but I'm not wrong on this. The Antichrist is fooling people. He's setting it up. It's being set up for his coming. And he's going to fool those who do not know the truth. He's going to fool those who do not know the truth. Find the truth. Believe the truth. Don't believe me. Don't believe me. Believe his word. His word. This word right here. This right here is God's Word. This right here even says, sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts to the bone when people hear the truth. They don't like it. The Bible says it. It's right on the front cover of this. But God loves you. And He sends people out here to tell you the truth. So heed the warnings. Look for the signs. It says, of that hour knows no man. But if you follow the signs, you can know Read Revelation and do some studying on your own, but you will know within two and a half days of when Christ will be here if you know the signs to look for. He gives you the final sign. It's two and a half days before the trumpet sounds. Do you know what that is? It's in Revelation. If you find it, let me know. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to spread your word and spread your truth, Lord. And I pray that it didn't fall upon deaf ears, deaf ears, Lord, that they will hear you. That they will hear your word, Lord, and that they will open up their minds and forget everything that I say and, and these other people say. And this one says and that one says and search your word and find your truth and know what to believe and that they will be forever in your kingdom. That is my prayer, Lord, that we will save some souls today, that you will save souls using this ministry and all the true ministries out there, that you will do it because it's not your will that any should perish, Lord. And I love you and give you the praise. In Jesus' name, I ask you 
to do these things. Amen. All right, people, have a good afternoon. Like I said, it's a beautiful day. It is here in Arkansas. I don't know where all you're at, but it sure is a beautiful day here. Good breeze blowing and leaves falling. It is just so lovely. God is good. He is good. All right, thank you very much.